Hi, my name is Alex with Dave Tech Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to add an org administrator to your Atlassian ecosystem. I'm also going to explain to you why it's important for you to control and manage org administrators. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Drop a like if you get any value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comments section below. Let's jump into Jira. Okay, so the org administrator actually sits above Jira. As you can see over here, if I go to this little grid, the Atlassian ecosystem doesn't just include Jira. It includes all the other products that you or your company may be using. And so that is Jira software, which is what almost everybody uses. But we also have Jira service management, Jira work management, Confluence, and so much more. These are the ones that I have. So when I'm talking about an org administrator, we aren't talking about like a Jira admin. We're not talking about a Confluence admin. Heck, we're not even talking about a site administrator because the site administrator, what they can do is at the URL of your, of your instance, they can manage both your Confluence and your Jira. So that's what the site administrator does. But the org administrator is bigger. The org administrator basically oversees all of your instances and all of the products under your Atlassian domain. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a second. Just know that the org administrator is the most important permission, is the most important administrator in your Atlassian ecosystem. And I want to be very careful here. I am calling it an Atlassian ecosystem. You'll notice this is not specific to Jira because if you're an enterprise user, you may have multiple Atlassian products. You may have multiple variations of different Jiras. And so this org administrator will oversee all of that. So let me show you how to add an org admin. And I'm also going to give you another couple of things of what an org admin can do that other administrators can't do. And there's also a very common misconception of what an org admin should be able to do, which I want to share with you. So anyways, coming back to Jira, um, and let's just say that you're leaving, you're the current org admin, or maybe just because from a good practice is you sometimes want to have at least two org admins in case one of you is on vacation or out sick. So it's always a good practice to at least have two. And so in order to do that, you're going to come over to the settings you're going to go to your user management, which is going to redirect you to your admin.atlassian.com. From here, you want to come over to settings, and then you will see an administrator section here. Now, unfortunately, for whatever reason, I can't show it to you using my Jira. So I'm going to switch on over to Atlassian's documentation so you can take a look at it there. Coming over to Atlassian's documentation, you can see that we go to settings at step one, just as I just told you in my instance. And then if you look on the left hand side, we're going to go down to administrators. If you don't have this, like I don't, then you're out of luck. It probably means you just, you're a team of one like I am and you can't add org admins. But I'm pretty sure that whenever you have at least two or more users in your instance, you should be able to see this administrator section. So this administrator section, again, is within the admin.elastian.com. It's not within the directory. It's not within the products. It's gonna be all the way to the right in the settings which means that it's sitting at a much more global level. But once you find and get yourself over to this administrator section, you're then going to be able to see who your current administrators are. And these are very, very, very important people. And something you want to watch out for here is maybe you get to this page because you can see it. But if you have an org admin in here that has left the company, now is the time to clean them up. Org administrators is very powerful. They are basically the representative that can represent you with technical support, with billing support, with Atlassian. And so you want to be very careful. You want to be very mindful that you don't have people that have left your company because when you deactivate a user via the directory or your user settings, they don't get removed from being an org admin. So if they had a different email that wasn't tied to like a SSO or through your specific domain, it's possible that they may still be able to access your Atlassian instance or be able to do some other changes without your authority. So it is very, very important that you audit this list of org admins because they're going to just, they have the most power. And so you want to make sure that these are trusted individuals. These are 
folks that are current that that should have this power. And also, while we're here, you also don't want to have too many cooks in the kitchen. You you want to have a couple, right? Just as a backup, but you don't want to have 10. You don't want to have 15. You don't want to have that many organisms. So anyways, you're going to come over here and you're going to swing yourself over to the right-hand side. You're going to see the ad administrators. When you click on that, you just put in the user's email and then it will add them. And so once they're added, they're your org administrator. And one of the cool things, one of the key things that an org administrator can do is one, they'll have access to like everything. They'll be able to see all the settings across all the instances of Jira, all the instances of Confluence, JSM, whatever you have. But most importantly, if you're on Jira Premium, only the org admin can create a sandbox. So if you remember back from my video from last week where we we're talking about sandboxes, if you are having a hard time creating a sandbox, you have to contact your org administrator so that they can do it for you because only the org administrator is going to have that power. And so anyways, this is a very quick little tutorial on how to do that. But I also want to talk about a couple of other differences. So I have another article here that is essentially going to tell us the differences between the different admins. But I want to highlight the org admins right here. So they're going to have access to the organization. And so that means that they can change names like the organization name. They can make other users org admins as well. So that's also kind of a key thing that I kind of missed. In order to add an org admin, you have to be an org admin. So it's kind of like buying a Ferrari where you can't buy a Ferrari unless you know or have a Ferrari. So it's very much the same kind of rules where you have to be an org admin to add another org admin. You just can't like a site admin can't go to this place and then add themselves. So this is again, very, very specific or very, very particular that you want to get yourself very, very careful in the situation where your current org admin like quits or leaves or is fired and then you're left without an org admin, right? So you don't want to be in those kind of positions. So make sure that you're actively managing who your org admins are. You can also verify and remove domains. If you're using that last in access, I haven't done any videos on this, but if you're using SSO or some sort of like Okta or Azure AD integration to manage your users, then you know that you have a, an Elastian Access bill that essentially allows you to be able to use the SSO services in the cloud. And so when you do that, the domain of your company has to be verified so that your email will work appropriately with the, all that great stuff. And so this individual can add and remove domains. So this is very, very key. Again, you don't want just anybody being able to do this kind of stuff or removing your domain because inadvertently you can kill everybody's access. They can subscribe to the Elastin Access, which again, really, really important here because your org admin is essentially going to be able to add to your bill because Elastin Access is a separate bill. It's not the same bill as your Jira or Confluence bill. So you want to be careful because these people can essentially add extra bills to your environment or to your, just to your, <laughs> whatever accounting department takes care of your bills. And then they can also manage the accounts, right? So they can edit the details, deactivate, delete users, some of the other stuff that site admins can do, but really, really important for you to understand that an org admin, very, very important, very, very powerful. You should have as little as possible, one or two. I prefer at least two. Make sure it's current. Make sure it's a trusted individual. Make sure it's a responsible individual. And um, that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you out. Um, I know that sometimes adding an org admin because it's not in the same place as adding other users, as adding other admins, it can be a little tricky. So hopefully this video helped you out. And if it did, make sure you subscribe. I am on my way to 2000 subscribers. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing, join the cause. And then if you got value of this video, drop a like, that always helps out the algorithm. And if you have any questions, concerns, or if you just want to help out with the algorithm stuff, uh, leave a comment. Those I, I really, really do appreciate reading through all the comments. I reply to every single comment. So if you just want to say hello or just give me your two cents, I'd be more than happy to take them in the comment section. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now.